Subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon and never miss an update from Latestly. I'm very pleased to say that um, we now have uh, in place the Glasgow Climate Pact, agreed amongst um, all the parties here. Of course, I'm really pleased that uh, this has been delivered. It's down to the hard work of uh, the UK team. It's down to the hard work of all the parties. And in the, the great cooperation that we have seen uh, from all negotiators, from all ministers, uh, and uh, right at the start of this summit, uh, at the World Leaders event, World Leaders came out and set out what they wanted delivered out of this event. I would say, however, that uh, this is a fragile win. And we have kept 1.5 alive. That was our overarching objective when we set off on this journey two years ago, taking on the uh, role of the uh, COP presidency designate. But I would still say that um, the pulse of 1.5 is weak. Uh, and that's why, whilst we have reached, I do believe, a historic agreement, what this will be judged on is not just the fact that countries have signed up, but it will be judged on whether they meet and deliver on the commitments. And during our presidency year, which of course started at the start of this summit, we will ensure that we will work really closely to ensure that the commitments that have been set out are being delivered by countries, and we will work in partnership with all of them. Collectively, we have got this over the line. I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who has helped with this, but as I say, the hard work starts now. I now invite the COP to adopt the decision entitled Glasgow Climate Pact. Hearing no objections, it is so decided. A few words about the truly historic achievement that was secured in Glasgow last night. And I'm very, very pleased to be joined by Alok Sharma, uh, my friend, the, the president of the, of the COP. For two weeks at COP26, politicians and negotiators and campaigners from around the world have been locked in talks about how we're going to keep our planet habitable for future generations by getting real about climate change. It was the biggest political gathering of any kind ever held in this country. And there was a reason for that. All these world leaders came to Glasgow because their politicians are telling them that they need to act. And we've heard about the peril that we fail, uh, that we face if we fail, and we've heard from the individuals who are already living with the effects. And yesterday evening, we finally came to the kind of game-changing agreement that the world needed to see. Almost 200 countries have put their name to the Glasgow Climate Pact, marking a decisive shift in the world's approach to tackling climate emissions, setting a clear roadmap to limiting the rising global temperatures to 1.5 degrees, and marking the beginning of the end for coal power. Because for the first time ever, a UN climate change conference has delivered a mandate to cut the use of coal power uh, for, of coal power generation. And it's backed up by real action from individual countries. For example, 
we've arranged a multi-billion pound partnership to help South Africa ditch coal and create new green jobs instead. On top of that, we've brokered a deal with the G20 to end international finance for coal by the end of next month. We've persuaded most of Western Europe and North America to mirror the commitment I made last December by pulling the plug on financial support for all overseas fossil fuel projects by this time next year. And when you add all that together, it is beyond question that Glasgow has sounded the death knell for coal power. It's a fantastic achievement, and it's just one of many to emerge from COP26.